Hello, good afternoon and welcome once again to The Results Show. A rich broth of Premiership, Championship, via play cup and more to get stuck into today. Julie Fleeting and Cami Bell will be partaking of the feast. And our reporters are standing by to bring us live updates. Just the two games in the Premiership today, thanks to the League Cup semi-finals. The early match was at Dingwall, where Ross County hosted league leaders Celtic. Here's Paul Mitchell with the story of the match. A 10th straight win against Ross County for Celtic and what looks like a comfortable scoreline, but a glimpse behind it would show a different tale as they talk hard against the county side who showed resilience after going down to 10 men when James Brown was sent off after just 10 minutes for a foul on Yang. The initial yellow upgraded to red after VAR consultation. Celtic had two goals chalked off after VAR checks and just when it looked like it'd be goalless at the break, Celtic made the breakthrough. It took a perfect low drive for David Turnbull to beat Ross Laidlaw. He was terrific throughout to deny Celtic on numerous occasions, but Celtic led at the half 1-0. It took until the 78th minute for Celtic to end County's resistance, a moment of enduring magic from Lewis Palmer with a curling long-range effort perfectly placed to make it 2-0. James Forrest rounded off the scoring with a late diving header. He's now scored at each of the last 15 seasons for Celtic. County valiant, Celtic successful. To finish Ross County 0, Celtic 3. Brendan Rodgers clearly enjoying that one. I wonder if Andy Burke is enjoying the fair at uh, Kilmarnock. They are at home to Motherwell this afternoon, Andy. Good afternoon, David. Kilmarnock at one, Motherwell nil. Kelly lead by a goal to nil. And on the balance of play, it's probably a lead they just about deserve. The departure of captain and top scorer Kyle Vassell early on was a huge blow to Kelly. But his replacement, Ennis Kim Cameron, is the man that's come up trumps. The goal coming on 49 minutes. A shot from outside the box spilled by the Motherwell keeper, Liam Kelly. He recovered to save the follow-up, but the ball eventually landed at the feet of Cameron, who slammed the ball home from eight yards for his first league goal of the season. A signal for Kelly, who had denied Brad Lyons with a stunning save in the first half. Motherwell's best chance came just before the hour mark when Paul McGinn set off in a run from his own half, slamming slalom through the entire Kelly defence, but when it came to apply the finish, his effort was weak and saved easily by Will Dennis. So we are 72 minutes on the clock and it remains Coman at one, Motherwell nil. Thanks, Andy. Andy will be keeping us posted on the only Premiership match that's underway today, <laughs> so we'll be talking plenty about that match. But we'll start with uh, Ross County Celtic, Julie. And when you go down to 10 men so early in the game, I mean, the, the result would or the outcome would seem inevitable. Yeah, I think there was that feeling about it the minute Brown gets sent off. I think as a team, Ross County will be preparing certainly for the last few days. Yeah, I definitely think he'll have had one eye in Europe. But um, for me, he's got a good enough squad there to go up to Dingwall and take care of that game. And he believes in his players that he's putting on the pitch to, to give them the opportunity to try and grab that shot. So just uh, one match underway in the Premiership, four underway in the Championship. Perhaps the most eye-catching involves Dundee United. The leaders are home to Inverness and Rory Loy is keeping an eye over that one. I am indeed, David. It's been um, a return to Tanadise for Duncan Ferguson, a relatively successful one um, to this point. There was chances in the first half aplenty. Uh, Divine, Billy Mackay, Molt, McMahon, all missing fantastic chances to score. However, it took till the 50th minute for the breakthrough to come. Nathan Shaw scored the goal after Cameron Harper had ran the full length of the left-hand side of the pitch, cut it back, good touch by Shaw, and slotted it home. However, there was a reply on 56 minutes. An eighth goal of the season for centre-back Kevin Holt, heading in for a Fotheringham corner. As it stands at the moment, with around 15 minutes to go, it's Dundee United 1, Inverness 1. Let's check in on Amy Canavan. She's watching second-placed Wraith Rovers at home to Airdrie. Afternoon, Amy. Afternoon, David. Yes, a thoroughly entertaining end-to-end -end encounter here at Starts Park. I don't want to really take my eyes off it and have to talk to you, to be quite honest with you. As Wraith Rovers won, Airdrieonians won. The hosts had a first-half a first half lead, sorry, through Callum Smith's absolutely ferocious finish. Lively striker hammering home beyond Josh Ray. First-time finish created down the right hand side by Aidan Connolly's very clever and cute little dummy just absolutely wiping out Liam McStravick on, out of the game uh, can't say it wasn't deserved I do think Rafe just edged a, a jam-packed first half Sam Stanton twice came close 
first with a drilled effort that just sort of grazed wide before a curler that was palmed away by the goalkeeper. The visitors, though, they did have their chances, twice leaving the woodwork struggling firstly through Todorov, who later did go on to score that equaliser. He smacked a shot off the crossbar before Rhys McKay, player manager on the volley. His effort looked destined to slip in just inside the post, but a superb save from Kevin Dabrowski, who's been a little bit busy recently, touched it on to the post to deny. It was an otherwise quiet start to the second half. Airdrionians, though, managed to carve out that equaliser. Todorov, as I said, with the final touch and a congested box on the edge of the corner. Both have had sniffs at a lead since then. Dabrowski's blushes were just not long ago saved. His attempted clearance cannoned off the bursting Callum Gallagher, the substitute, actually. Luckily, though, for the Rovers keeper, the ball fell kind and he managed to have a second glow at clearing his lines and then just literally seconds before you came to me there David Ray pulled out an absolutely sensational save Connolly's peach off a strike was searching for the top corner but the keeper pulled out a stop Cammy would have been more than chuffed with it is Wraith Rovers 1 at Airdrionians 1 here at Starts Park Time for a bit of uh, Chick Young chat now he's watching Air United against Queen's Park a very warm welcome to the show Chick Thank you, thank you, David. That's very welcoming of you. Um, I have to say, uh, boy, cliches like the plague, but this is threatening to be like the classic game of two halves. It was all Air United in the first half. Anton Dodds, uh, Scott Dowd rather, scored two goals, two fine goals in the first half, uh, and it was all Air United. They were very comfortable at half time. I felt uh, looking great, but Queen's Park, a shadow of the team who threatened to get themselves onto the top league last season, but how they've rallied in the second half. They've got one goal back. Uh, was a, a header at the far post. Alex Bannon scored that in the end of a of a corner. Uh, and in the wake of that, Queen's Park have been all over uh, Air United, threatening to get the second goal. They haven't got it quite yet, but uh, we're nosing towards the end of this game. And I have to say, the Queen's Park, the Air United fans, a crowd of 2,000, just acting a little bit nervously at the moment. It currently stands at uh, Air United two, Queen's Park one. We're off to Gayfield now. We're both at home to Partick Thistle, his other match in the Championship this afternoon. And our man there is Derek Ferguson. Derek? Yeah, good afternoon, David. A comfortable afternoon's work at the moment for Thistle as they lead uh, Abroath uh, three goals to nil. Thistle, they took the lead 23rd minute. Uh, the, the combination was McEnroy playing in uh, Aidan Fitzpatrick uh, with a lovely goal into the second half. It could have been uh, too early on. In fact, it was six minutes into the second period. Uh, Stephen Lawless missing from the spot, but you got the feeling the second was coming. And it did for Thistle, and I was talking about that combination, McEnroy again. In with some lovely play, finding Fitzpatrick and Fitzpatrick with a class finish. Uh, Thistle got a third. I'm just looking there, Abroath nearly getting one back there. Yeah, Thistle got a third. It was woeful defending uh, from Abroath and it allowed Brian Graham to get in just to guide home from close range. So a bit of a cruise at the moment for Thistle. It's Abroath now, party Thistle three. Now, folks, it's via play cup. League Cup in Old Money at semi-finals weekend. Rangers and Hearts meet at Hamden tomorrow, but this very tea time, 5.15 to be precise. Hibs and Aberdeen have a date at the National Stadium. Liam McLeod is there for us and he joins us now with a wee bit of a build-up, Liam. Hi, David. Yeah, hello to you all. 10 to 5 is the time, so about 25 minutes until this one kicks off. The supporters making their way into Hamden. It's a cold night on Glasgow's south side. The two sets of players going through their warm-ups in front of me is these two clubs meet at Hamden in this competition for the first time since the final in 1985 which Aberdeen won 3-0 thanks to two goals from Eric Black and one from Billy Stark but it's been Hibs who've enjoyed the better of the meetings between these two over the last 12 months you might remember the 6-0 victory they enjoyed in January at Easter Road that saw Jim Goodwin's time at Pataudry come to an end Barry Robson took over thereafter and a lot of positives. few negatives this season. Both clubs actually have been pretty stuttering in their form this campaign. And the two sets of players that the two managers have put out for this one are four changes for Nick Montgomery. Obita, Marshall, Newell and Boyle coming into the side. Wallacott, Stevenson, Jago and Lafondra dropping out from the side that threw away a 2-0 lead against Ross County in the 2-2 draw in Edinburgh on Tuesday. So it's Marshall in goal. Miller, Fish, Bushiri and Obita at the back. Tavares, Levitt, Newell and Johan with Boyle and Venta up front. And I can tell you, Martin Boyle is wearing the same boots that he wore when he scored a hat-trick at this stage of the tournament against Rangers two seasons ago. Will that be a lucky omen for him? For Aberdeen, just the one alteration from the side that won 4-2 at Fir Park 
on Wednesday. That's Barron in for Pulvara. So Roos in goal, Gartiman, Rubicic and Jensen. Devlin and Mackenzie wide. Barron in the captain, Shinny in the middle with McGrath and Clarkson supporting Miofsky. The referee, David, for this one is John Beaton. The final, remember, is on December the 17th with Hearts taking on Rangers in the second semi tomorrow. Full coverage and sports sound on BBC Radio Scotland of both ties. Who out of these two, Hibs and Aberdeen, will be back here for the showpiece and who faces a winter of discontent? We'll find out soon. Let's head uh, to Rugby Park now, full time in the Premiership. Kilmarnock against Motherwell, Andy. And it's three points for Kilmarnock. They've won here by a goal to nil. Three straight home wins for Kelly and three wins in their past four games. And they were the better side here throughout and in truth should probably have won the game by more. Innes Cameron was the match winner. He replaced the injured Kyle Vassell on 15 minutes and really put himself about and when his chance came on 49 minutes he took it well a scramble in the box after a fumble by Motherwell keeper Liam Kelly ultimately saw the ball drop to Cameron and he smashed home from close range for the only goal of the game that was the, a, a blot and an otherwise excellent display in the Motherwell goal from Kelly he produced a stunning save from Brad Lyons in the first half Kelly had a number of other chances with Danny Armstrong at the the heart of much of their good attacking play. Motherwell's best chance came just before the hour mark. Paul again set off on a thrilling run from defence that took him all the way in to the Kelly box, but his finish was weak and easily saved by Will Dennis. But Stuart Kettlewell, while he'll be heartened by some of the good defending from Motherwell today, he will be concerned at the real attacking or lack of attacking threat from his team, a real lack of composure on the ball. And Kelly saw this one out with relative comfort. It's seven league games without a victory for Motherwell. For Kilmarnock, well, they're up to fourth in the table. Final score here, Kilmarnock one, Motherwell nil. I tell you what, folks, you sit back and relax because it's time for today's classified results roundup. And hold on to your hats, here we go with the Cinch Premiership. Kilmarnock one, Motherwell nil. Ross County nil, Celtic 3. One match tomorrow, Dundee versus Livingston. In the Championship, Morton 1, Dunfermline Athletic 2. That was played last night. Arbroath 1, Partick Thistle 3. Air United 2, Queen's Park 2. Dundee United 1, Inverness Caledonian Thistle 1. Wraith Rovers 1, Adrianians 1. In League One. And in Athletic 2, Kelty Hearts 2, Cove Rangers 1, Hamilton Academical 0, Edinburgh City 1, Montrose 5, Queen of the South 1, Falkirk 1, Stilling Albion 0, Alloa Athletic 2. And in League 2, Clyde 1, the Spartans FC 2, Dumbarton 4, Bonnie Rig Rose 0. Four for Athletic, one. Stennis Muir, three. Peterhead, two. East Fife, nil. Stranraer, three. Elgin City, one. One Scottish Cup tie this afternoon. It is. Lancarty, nil. Bonus United, one. Congratulations to Bonus. They will play Morton away in the third round. Into the English Premier League we go. Brentford, three. West Ham United, two. Burnley nil, Crystal Palace two, Everton one, Brighton and Hove Albion one, Fulham nil, Manchester United one, Manchester City six, Bournemouth one, Newcastle United play Arsenal this evening, Sheffield United two, Wolverhampton Wanderers one, two games tomorrow, Luton Town at home to Liverpool and Nottingham Forest versus Aston Villa and on Monday, Tottenham Hotspur host Chelsea. In the Skybet Championship, Leicester City nil, Leeds United one, Birmingham City two, Ipswich Town two, Bristol City one, Sheffield Wednesday nil, Huddersfield Town nil, Watford nil, Millwall nil, Southampton one, Plymouth Argyle three, Middlesbrough three, Preston North End three, Coventry City two. That's a latest score. Rotherham United one, Queens Park Rangers one, Stoke City nil, Cardiff City nil. Swansea City nil, Sunderland nil, West Bromwich Albion three, Hull City one, and Norwich City play Blackburn Rovers tomorrow. Getting in for a treat now, it's the FA Cup.
first round. I'll just cherry pick some of the scores there, including AFC Wimbledon 5, Cheltenham Town 1, Bolton Wanderers 4, Solihull Moors 0, Bristol Rovers 7, Whitby Town 2. Still time for a comeback, that's the latest score. Bromley against Blackpool, you can watch that on BBC Two at quarter to six. Cambridge United two, Brighton Old Town one. Aye, that Bromley game's to my, tomorrow. Uh, Cheltenham United nil, Mason United two, and Curzon Ashton nil, Barnet one. Let's have a look. There's more, as they say. Eastleigh five, Boreham Wood one. The pick of that, the scores on this board. Or maybe Harrogate Town 5, Marine 1, uh, Marine at home in that one. Oxford United 2, Maidenhead United 0. I'm enjoying this. Let's have a look at this one. Um, interesting score there. Stevenage 4, Tranmere Rovers 3. And look at that score line there. Swindon Town 4, Aldershot Town 7. And then on Sunday, Charlton Athletic versus Cray Valley Paper Mills, I know you hold a candle for them, Cammy. Uh, that's on BBC Two as well tomorrow. Some other games to look forward to as well in the FA Cup first round. Chesterfield, Portsmouth, Crewe, Derby, Kidderminster, Harriers, Fleetwood Town and Slough Town against Grimsby Town. Enough, let's have a look at the league table, starting with the uh, Premiership. Celtic increasing their lead at the top to eight points with that 3-0 win away to Ross County. Rangers uh, are in League Cup semi-final action tomorrow. Kilmarnock with that 1-0 win at home to Motherwell, as Andy Burke said. That moves Kelly up to fourth in the table. Meanwhile, at the bottom, no change there. Uh, Ross County level on points with Livingston. Livingston played on D tomorrow. No game this weekend for St. Johnson at rock bottom on seven points. In the Championship. Draws for the top two today, so no change in the points differential there. Dundee United still four points ahead of uh, second place Wraith Rovers. Good day for Partick Thistle, uh, consolidating their spot in third with a 3-1 win away to both And firm on that win against Morton last night and Greenock moves them to fourth. Here comes League One. The big news there is Hamilton slumping to their first defeat of the season. They lost to Cove Rangers. Falkirk uh, increased their lead at the top. They drew with Queen of the South today. Meanwhile, at the bottom, three points between Edinburgh City and Annan Athletic. We'll have a look at League Two next. And it reveals uh, Peterhead's two points clear of Dumbarton with a game in hand at the top of the table. Still tight at the bottom there. Elgin City and Clyde level on six points for far. Two points better off than the pair of them. English Premier League. Thumping win for Man City today. Moves them to the top of the table. They Bournemouth 6-1. Arsenal play Newcastle at tea time. And on Monday, Spurs are at home to Chelsea. Here's the bottom of the table. Big news at the bottom of the table. First win of the season for Sheffield United. They beat Wolves by two goals to one today. That draws them level uh, with Burnley. Luton Town, the other team in the bottom three, they play Liverpool tomorrow. So there we go. Uh, let's get some details on the lunchtime match in England today. Fulham at home to Manchester United. That was watched for us by John Southall. Fulham nil, Manchester United won. They left it late. They left it to the 91st minute. It was a mess in the Fulham defence, but the captain, Bruno Fernandes, kept his calm just inside the penalty area, cut inside a defender and finished inside the near post. The goalkeeper, Leno, got a hand to it, but he couldn't keep it out in front of the jubilant Manchester United supporters. Also, their goalkeeper, Andrea Nana, had a big say in the afternoon as well. He made two key saves from Harry Wilson and Polina in the second half when Fulham were on top. But what a big win for Manchester United and what a big win for their manager, Eric Ten Hag, as they now head out to Copenhagen in the Champions League. Fulham nil, Manchester United won. As I mentioned earlier, Man City back to the top of the table with a thumping 6-1 win over Bournemouth. We can get the details now from John Bennett. 
Manchester City 6, Bournemouth 1, the Jeremy Doku show. 22 home wins in a row now for Man City. This victory inspired by Doku. One goal and four, yes, four assists. He scored the opener, driving into the box, set up both Bernardo Silva goals, set up Foden's close, close range effort, had a shot deflected in off Manuel Akanji. Nathan Ake is diving header, the only goal that didn't involve him. But the big post match talking point will be the injury to Erling Haaland. He had to go off at half time. Man City 6, Bournemouth 1. On. Plenty of excitement there. It was a late, late, late show for Sheffield, and that's not easy to say. In their match, they had their first win of the season, 2-1 winners over Wolves. Let's find out more about that from Naz Premji. Mark, mark the date, Saturday, 4th November, Sheffield United 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1. They've got their first Premier League win of the season. Cameron Archer with a blockbuster effort. It was, uh, of course, Bell guards deflected ever which level then they got the spout spot kick Fabio Silva on George Baldock long VAR check and Ollie Norwood held his nerve in injury time to lift the roof off Bramall Lane and please the pressure on Paul Hecking bottom Sheffield United 2 Wolverhampton Wanderers 1 yep. trail time so sit back uh, and enjoy what's coming up on the BBC so here we go uh, Tomo and the team will be along shortly with a highlight show at half seven on BBC Scotland, repeated later on BBC One. Tomorrow, your footballing day on Radio Scotland starts just after the midday news with Stuart Cosgrove and Tam Cowan off the ball, followed by Sports Sound with coverage of the second via play semi final and Dundee versus Livingston in the Premiership. The SWPL match between Hearts and Glasgow City is being streamed live on the iPlayer from three with highlights of that and the rest of the weekend's matches with Jane Lewis on Monday night. And on Friday, there is live championship football on BBC Scotland as Dunfermline host leaders Dundee United. Well, I'm afraid, folks, that's us just a bit done and dusted for another Saturday. But Tomo will be here with highlights of today's two Premiership matches later on BBC Scotland. Remember, it's also repeated later on BBC One. And Sports Sound's coverage of Hibs versus Aberdeen continues now on Radio Scotland. My thanks to Julie Fleeting and Cami Bell and to the dream team off screen and behind the scenes. Most of all, as always, to you for watching. Take care and we'll see you soon. <laughs>